Caring, he's a loving, loving person, but he's also, um, he was quick to anger, I guess, when he was younger, I'd say. Really? I'm mellow. Yeah. So, um, some of the best stories that I have, I think, were involving him getting upset at me. Uh, and one in particular that comes to mind is one time we were working together, uh, Rick, Randy, me and you, and uh, was there someone else in the car? I, I can't remember, but anyways, this is like in the middle of a snowstorm blizzard. We're helping Rick out work on a building, and we decide we're going to go to Hot and Now for lunch. So we drive to the Hot and Now. Where there, you can't go in at Hot and Now. You have to do drive through that's, uh, that's all they oh, offer. I remember so we, drive, that <laughs> we drive around to the, the drive through window, and we get up there, and Randy's driving, and he's like, oh. My my front windshield doesn't even work. Yeah, front window. So he's like, window. okay, Corey, you're because I'm sitting right behind Randy. You we got to order from your windshield. Okay, so I roll down my window, but it's one of those car, uh, like the child safety window. So it only comes down like three inches. <laughs> <laughs> I have three inches that I'm doing my order through. And Dad's in the passenger seat, and he's already getting a little upset because I'm doing, I'm not doing a very good job ordering. You know, I'm screwing off, and I'm like. Asking for ridiculous, ridiculous requests. Yeah. Whatever I can think of. Finally get the order in. Dad's already upset. Get to the, we get up to the, the actual window to get the food. And I'm thinking I'm going to try to open the door to get food in. There's no way, three inch gap, that we can get the bags of food through the window. But before I get a chance to open the door, the kid, the teenager working there, he sees the windows down and he's like, you can tell that's the expression on his face, he's like... I want to try to get those bags through that window. <laughs> this is a cool idea. So he yeah. starts shoving. <laughs> he starts trying to shove all the hamburgers through. You know, twenty hamburgers or whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start pulling. You know, so I start pulling on the bag of hamburgers. He's pushing, and Dad is at this point yelling. He is so upset that we're trying to attempt this at all. <laughs> 
and that we should have had opened the door and got the burger. So he's screaming at me, pulling on the hamburger bag, and of course the bag rips. And hamburgers go flying, right. several of which, several of which come out of the packaging and land on the floor. They oh, the, the bunch open up and land on the floor, face down. I don't know how that happens. It's like scientifically that doesn't seem possible, but it does happen. Three or four of them. And, and Dad, he gets done with his rant, he just looks at me and he said, Those are your burnt. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a story about heart so and anger. <laughs> Corey, Grandma, and Grandpa and myself were um, driving to Jesse's wedding. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I got the privilege of being the navigator. <laughs> I say privilege. It was probably one of the most anxious times of my life. But I am the navigator and I have the map and we're going through a very busy, I think it was Indianapolis. And it's busy and there, there's just um, construction everywhere. And I was like, all right, I've got this. I know which exit to get. He's like, Christian, you've got to look at the map. And you got to find a way around all of this construction. And I'm like, i got this. I can do this. I've got it. Grandma's sleeping. Corey's in the back. And I was like, all right, here we go. I'm Navigator. And I'm like, OK, Grandpa, in five minutes, you're going to take exit 162. And he goes, Five minutes going 60 or five minutes going 100? How many minutes is five minutes? And I was like, I mean miles. I mean miles. <laughs> and, and then I wasn't the navigator anymore. <laughs> and the other one is um, everybody remembers winter time at the Heinz house when I was living there was puzzle time. And the, um, and the kitchen table became a giant puzzle. I mean, we're talking thousands of pieces of puzzles. And Grandma and Grandpa had the most amazing way of building a puzzle. And everybody, you remember this? <laughs> they would not speak during puzzle building. All it would be, would you, would, every once in a while, would hear this. And then they would look at each other. Because that person was ahead. And they got the puzzle and tapped it in. And it was just the most amazing thing to watch. You know, I was going to sit hours without speaking, just tapping. <laughs> That's it. Now that kind of looks over. I just kind of like look. And so we're like, all right, whatever. So we keep on eating. We drop another one. And it was just. <laughs> like, it's like out of his chair, kind of. And then, before you know it, we're dropping like two or three. And he gets up out of his chair and he's like, If I find another crumb on the floor, I'll shoot you! <laughs> Whoa! That's the scariest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's about it. You can tell who's on here, okay? <laughs> but they knew it was true. Oh. <laughs> because we weren't the greatest. Jamie was always the mastermind. She always had all the great ideas. Jamie and we weren't so great. But, um, so one time, we built this awesome fort right behind Grandpa's shed. And it was perfect. We didn't use any nails or anything. 
and it had like a it had a sunroof. And we even, we, yeah, it was awesome. And so we're really excited. And then we it, it's getting late, so we go home. And the next day we get there, and it's just like all stacked up on our wagon. It's destroyed, stacked up on the wagon. And so you know we go inside and we're like. Hey, Grandpa, do you know what happened to the fort outside? And he's like, oh, yeah, terrible windstorm. <laughs> 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 We wanted to shoot, we had a slingshot, and we wanted to shoot a baby bird. And then like nurse, nurse it back it, to like help. We were a weird kid. We were a And so, so there was this picnic table, and we were sitting at the picnic table, and I don't, did you have the slingshot or did I? It was you. I don't, I don't know about that. But anyway, we had the slingshot. And we're aiming up, and we're right, straight ahead is this tree, and there's birds on it, and there's a bird feeder. And we shoot, and it goes right into the bird feeder. And just I thought it was a flower. Oh, yeah, it was a flower basket, like, cool. like hanging from a tree. And it go, the rock went right into it and just destroyed it. And we were so scared because, you know, that was probably after he threatened to shoot us. <laughs> And so we're like, what do we do? What do we do? And so we took it and we threw it behind his shed. And we didn't tell him. And one day he walks out there and he's like, who shot my bird? <laughs> They were heading down state for somewhere, but it was like Randy and Wendy and a few people, and they were in a car driving, but they were taping it, and I heard the tape, and this is what I heard on the tape. They're all talking, and they're all talking, and all of a sudden, you hear the radio, and your dad's like, shh, everybody be quiet. I want to hear the weather on the radio. I got to hear the weather for tomorrow. They keep talking and talking. He's like, come on, everybody be quiet. I need to hear the weather on the radio. And they just keep talking. And all of a sudden, you can hear him, and he's like, I can't hear the weather on the radio. So I'll go to work tomorrow. People say, Dick, do you know what the weather is? I don't know what the weather is. How do I know what the weather is? I can't hear the weather. But then there was, a, um, there was another one where 
And this kind of shows you the evolution that you go through through life. When I was young, and I married Kara, and I would work on my car, Dick would be out there, and then eventually, at one point, he would take over. Actually, hands-on, you know, because he didn't want to be out there. And it was quicker for him to do it than for me to do it. Because you do it wrong every time. Well, that too. <laughs> then it evolved to where he would float around the car and tell you what you were doing wrong. You know, well, this won't turn. That's because you're turning it the wrong way, you know. Well, I can't get this out. Well, pry harder. So then it went from that to where he'd be at the house watching TV. So you'd have to go from the pole barn, walk into the house, ask him a question, he'd tell you something, you'd go back out to the pole barn, and you wouldn't do it right, walk back into the house and ask him a question again. Well then, I think it was last summer, maybe the summer before, he buys his Cadillac. And so something's wrong with the um, charging system. So. Mike and me and him go out to the pole barn. So we start working on the car. And we it wasn't too long before we realized we had to take the alternator out, but it's a Cadillac. And to make a long story short, you just can't get the alternator out. Do you remember this, Mike? No. Okay, good. <laughs> so we're sitting there, and we're looking at it. And we decide, well, let's take out, well, we could take out the air conditioner. And if we take out the air conditioner, It'll, it'll make it easier to get it out in the radiator and all that. So we're looking at it, and Mike said something like, well, should we really take the air conditioner out? And so we look at the air conditioner. It's like it ain't going to matter. So we take the air conditioner out, so we're starting to work on it. So Mike's working on it for a while, and his back starts to hurt. So he tags me in, and I'm taking more parts off of it, and his back starts to hurt. So we tag Dick in. So Dick's starting to work on it. And then his back's starting to hurt, and over and over again it went until we got it fixed. But it just goes to show you how life evolves, and you know, we don't all uh, it. it took three of us to do that one, yeah. And I had one with Randy, but now I can't remember what it was. I know. It was, um, let me think for one second and see if I can remember it. <coughs> with Randy? I can't remember it. Anyway. <laughs> I, I remember one time we were in the basement. We had a basement pool table and everything, and me and Rick were downstairs playing pool. And a dog walked by the window and downstairs. I said, Rick, look, there's a dog. And Rick went with a pool stick like that to scare it away. And he hit the window and it busted. And all, Rick and I just stood there and we heard my dad screaming, What was that? What was that? So then we all went, or Rick and I were like, nothing, nothing. And Dad's like, I heard something, what was it? And so um, Eric was about maybe five or six years old. And he came down with Dad down the stairs, following Dad, right behind Dad. And Dad's like, what was that? And finally Rick's like, the window. <laughs> and he's like, what happened to the window? And we, were, and I said, a dog. <laughs> and Dad's like, how? How did it break? I said, well, I don't know, a dog walked by. And Dad's screaming, how could a dog break that window? And Eric's like, yeah, how could a dog break that window? And Eric's repeating everything Dad said. And me and Rick were so mad at, at Eric. <laughs> that was pretty good. But we got in trouble for that one. I was mad because you guys blamed the sink on me. Yeah, I said you climbed the wall. That's right. Yeah, I sat, I sat on the bathroom. I sat on the bathroom sink because I used to have to sneak donuts and food. From eight, when you lived with eight kids, you snuck your food. That's around. right. That's you right. Had, you had to share. Yeah. Everything in the house you share. Well, that's one thing that that they taught us to share. Mom and Dad really taught us a lot of values, and I really appreciate that. And, but anyway, I would see Mike in the bathroom. So I sat on the sink. Corey and I were in the bathroom, and I sat on the sink with eating donuts, and the sink broke. And water was spraying everywhere. Mom and Dad were at a Lions football game with Randy, Rick, all the boys. The girls weren't allowed to go. But Eric was too little, so I was watching Eric. 
And so I had to call. I didn't know how to turn the water off, where the shutoff was, or anything. So the whole bathroom's just flooded. And so I called the neighbor, a friend of the family's. He came, showed me right where the shutoff was in the basement, and then he fixed it. Took him half a day, fixed all the plumbing, got the sink back up, and then when mom and dad got home, I had to hand them this huge bill. <laughs> she decided to do it herself. So you come home from work and the wall is torn down. Torn down. And yeah, guess the what? The wall got moved. <laughs> and she said, if you want something done, start it. He'll start finish it. But I want to tell you about, um, you all know about my family past and that this I can't. <laughs> this is my family, you guys. This is what I've got. Okay. So, um, my surgery was 12 years ago. You guys know all that. But I, I don't know if everybody knows how this happened, and I want to share it because it means so much to me and my family. But um, <clears throat> I started searching for bariatric surgery. You guys know that? And um, I didn't have time to look over the stuff, but Myrna called me and said, I'll look it over, just send it to me. So I printed everything out, and um, I said, here, I don't have time, you look at it. And she called me and said, no, 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 we're not going to do this. It's too risky, there's too much into it, and whatnot. And um, I said, okay, so we, we, that went on. Well, then we found out the sad news in February, and... Um, she and you called me and Mike over one night. Sorry, you heard this last night. We're living it. But called us over and said, um, you need to have the surgery because this is your cure and there's not one for me. And that's what you guys are all about to me. And I just wanted to say I love you. Thank you for being my family, all you guys. And it's not the wine talking. Yay! I would drive them. You were so mad that I forgot all those balloons. It was me like yelling at you. It was me. Are we going to blow out his candles? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Happy birthday to you. Hey, okay, you sit right there. Here you go. You ready? Fire! Great. I wouldn't trade you for anybody. And y'all turned out great. <laughs> Which is a surprise. <laughs> that most of you survived some of the stuff. <laughs> When we were all getting wood and stuff like that, it's a wonder somebody didn't get killed, but we all made it through. And I'm happy to have such a large family, and hope I can be around for a few more years.